you know what? Fuck it. Let's go do Antorus the Burning Throne. Admiral Spherax. See how she has wings? But she she's got like dark skin. She's almost like blackish purple with green eyes. So that's an Antoran. And I'll show you guys as we get more in here. So like let me let me let me make something distinct. Let me show you something. These These are fell sworn. You see how they don't have wings? All these guys around here for the most part are fell sworn. They're touched by fell, but it's not like completely taken unto them. These demons don't even necessarily, I mean demons, you know what they say about demons, that these demons are all fell touched. But inside of Antorus, the higher commanding NPCs have wings. And I think that says something about their station, maybe even their very, de de their, the, 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 the demonic race that they are. Um, let's go in here. So this is uh, up on the rampart. So if you look out, this is where we just were. We were just down there. The problem is with this raid is that they make the exterior over there where we just came from look completely dead and empty, even though we literally just came from there. So that's one thing that they didn't do very well in this raid. But we come in with the light. We're fighting Antoran fell guards now, actually inside of Antorus. Well, not inside, but outside Antorus. We don't have to fight this stuff, by the way, we can walk by it, but if you want to fight it, I don't give a shit. You're a demon hunter, so, you know, if you want to kill these demons. Here we go. Antoran champions. You see how these ones have wings? And they're big and red like Kill Jaden. This is a difference. See, like, this... These are Antoran. And I, I do think that there's a difference. So Sargeras has left us with a few of his favorite pets to play with. Remove these abominations. So these are the fell hounds of Sargeras, infused with fire and shadow. Fjarg and Shatog are the prized pets of Sargeras. Bred for carnage, these hounds delight in eviscerating their master's enemies. With the army of the light and their allies advancing upon Antorus, the Legion prepares to unleash these vicious creatures onto the battlefield and put an end to the mortal's invasion. So the fell hounds are fire and shadow. Isn't that interesting? Because fell, we, we're kind of told like, right, fell is this chaotic magic that is like life, death, light, shadow, arcane, ca like all those things together. But it just seems very strange that if that were the case, why are the fell hounds just flame and shadow? Does this suggest that maybe a universal flame and universal shadow can make up a magic that encompasses every force? Because that's kind of what I think. <coughs> Azeroth, <coughs> Argus, <coughs> flame, <coughs> shadow. Um, but also everything, right? So it's always stood out to me. It's just a little strange that they're not fell. Do we know what fell really is? Like, how does it come into existence? Okay, let me show you guys, because I think that this raid answers that question. Okay, I think it really does answer that question. I do not think that fell is an inherently, naturally occurring magic, necessarily. I think that it is a mishmash, a, 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 a smash together, or, you know, alchemical combination of, of, of energy, okay? I don't think fell is naturally occurring. But I think that we are on the battery for Fell. And by that I mean, yes, Argus and Sargeras and Antorus the Burning Throne. This very planet, I think, is a manufacturing plant for Fell. Like, they're literally making the energy here. It's, it's not that Sargeras is corrupting Argus with Fell from somewhere else. Like... I think that this really is, like, where it comes from. And I'll show you why I think that. Because in this raid, you will find, especially once we get to Antorus the Burning Throne, um, you will notice that there is some weird blood magic going on. And I'm going to point it out to you guys. Um, some also would say that Antorus the Burning Throne, in that it is a... Uh, the conduit for these demon souls acts in a way like the Maw, which is curious also because it has big chains around all over it, large, you know, pillar-like objects sending magic to and from areas, you know? Some similarities. Don't pull this boss, please. 
So, before this boss, you guys remember in the, um, the Elune place? Remember how we saw this, but it was different. Remember when I told you that the Shadowlands there only had two rings on it? It's funny now because here it has three. And the Emerald Dream still only has two. And then there's the other celestial bodies, the Elune, the Blue Child, and most likely the Sun. So, we're seeing two different cultures from two different places with completely different leaders, being Ilun and the Kaldori, and then Kil'jaeden, or um, Sargeras and the Burning Legion here. We're seeing two completely different civilizations with two different completely magic, completely different magics, depicting the same thing. Why? Here's what I think. The, f the way that you find the truth of these types of situations is not by looking at one and going, okay, that's the answer, because that's fucking stupid. It's by comparing and contrasting all of them. And this celestial map exists also in Karazhan. Some of the planets which exist in it, I believe, also exist in Ulduar, and in the Halls of Stone, and in, I think even, in the Halls of Lightning. So, or maybe the Halls of Lightning, maybe not the Halls of Stone. So here's what I'm gonna tell you this, chat. One thing that you have to come to accept, and this is, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, push, I'm pushing this on you, I'm pushing this on you, so, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna feel like I'm telling you what you're supposed to believe, and I am, okay? The, they do not accidentally depict the Emerald Dream and the Shadowlands in the Chronicle map as celestial objects, chat. This is not an accident. This is not an accident. It's so obvious what they're doing. Emerald Dream, Shadowlands, Elune, Blue Child, Sun. Emerald Dream, Shadowlands, Elune, Blue Child, Sun. It is exactly the same. This, here's what I'm telling you. The Shadowlands as we know it, or maybe that's not the Shadowlands. Maybe this is Ardenweald in some capacity, but the Blue Child makes me think otherwise. The plane of existence of the Dream and of the Shadowlands, they're bound in some capacity to celestial objects. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, dude. That right there is, is, is what is depicted on this Chronicle map that represents the Emerald Dream. And the other one is the Shadowlands. There is no chance in hell that that's not what they are. The consistency between star maps is far too, it's far too consistent. But like I said, one of the things that stands out is that in this map, there are three rings orbiting the Shadowlands, not just one. And in some of the other maps, there are more smaller celestial bodies. I always thought are, these are just different planets, but as of now, I can see how this lore can actually be true. I mean, look at what's in the center, bro. It's Azeroth. Like, this is what I've been trying to tell you guys. I don't know how, how else I can say it. There is a veil around the planet that stops you from seeing celestial bodies that are anchored to it. You can't see them because you're not supposed to be able to see them because the Titans have made it so that you can't see them. That's the whole point. So, again, when you look at the Chronicle map, guys, this is not a coincidence. It's not an accident. The Moonguard Sanctuary has a map like this. The Tomb of Sargeras has a map like this. Ulduar has a map like this. All that stuff. It's like, there's no way. There's no way that it's an accident. So, keep that in mind. And, and think about this. This is the high command of the Antoran army, okay? So these guys are were the generals of the of the Eridar armies even before Sargeras came. So the the tacticians and the and the generals that worked for the Eridar, that's who these people are, and we're gonna fight them. But why would they show this in this raid? It's very interesting. This area is called the Gaze of the Legion. So probably the most homoerotic area in Antorus the Burning Throne. But with that being said, um, you know. It's them looking out upon the different realms and determining their, you know, what are they gonna do? Did you just get a legendary? Every world in our path has fallen. Yours is next, is what Portal Keeper Hazabel says. So for those who don't know, Nathreza is not completely destroyed. In fact, the reason we know that is because this boss actually has a portal. This purple portal over here is a portal to Nathreza. So for anyone like, yo, Nathreza, we can never go there. Here's my thing. I think that uh, Denathrius fled to Nathreza 
and I think that he and the rest of the uh, the Legion may be operating from, or Dreadlords at least, may be operating from there. There's also Zoroth, which is this flame world, and there is Rancora, which is a fell world. But I think Rancor is very interesting. Something that I, when I think of Rancora, I think about life, like the force of life, which is, which is, I don't know, maybe that's a mistake. The portal keeper here, who's also an Antorin, you see, she's got the wings, she's got the big horns. Let's go through, well, we can't go through. So she opens up these portals. Can we? I don't think so, yeah. Oh! And then while you're up here, you actually fight a Dreadlord. And it's interesting to me because the Dreadlord um, says to you, your minds are so easily clouded. And I have mind fog. Shadows obstruct your vision. I'm going to see what the effects for the others are. Don't go into Elune's room yet. Don't go into Anar's room yet. Do you think they get stronger because of Fell or similar to Demon Hunters get fused with the Demon? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I think that the power that Sargeras gives is a little bit different than a standard flame, but that might be wrong. Sargeras might literally be flame. Just flame. And if Argus is shadow, then flame and shadow together might make Fell. You know? But it's confusing because they try to make it seem like Fel has every cosmic force. But I wonder, does like every magical representation of said cosmic forces have to be used to craft Fel? Or is it just... Like, am I mixing up what magic really is? Like, once again. I think it's a fascinating thing to consider. Champions! I heard a familiar voice calling. So I fought me way inside this accursed place. Champions, hear me. The Legion has breached my sanctuary. And now, my defenses will soon be overrun. I didn't have the echo on. Fuck! Stand with me now, lest Sargeras claim his prize. Yeah, fuck you. It's Aenar, the life binder! This portal leads to her sanctuary. Go. Oh, I'll stay here and cover your backs. To the planet... Celestial body of Elunaria. Now, a couple things to note. Elunaria. From here, you can see those. Chat, tell me. I'm not even going to say it. What are those? What are those? This is easy. Come on. What is it? Planet Earth, balls, moons. Come on now, you guys can do this. Blue child, correct? Correct? And Musha, Elune. Where's the sun? It's not down here. Where is it? Okay, another question. What is that? Here's what I think it is. There's a globe with like this net around it, basically this grid. I remember the awakening, how life sprang forth all, all around that us. Planet in the I remember unity. Is perfectly overlaid in the background from the, the globe of Azeroth. They literally overlap as it pans over. When it shifts, and that planet in the distance is perfectly overlaid in the background from the, the globe of Azeroth. That's not a mistake, chat. This is a very clever, this is a very clever uh, hint that someone who made this did on purpose. You do not. You do not do this without... Uh, let me just put it this way. You're a fucking idiot if you design a cutscene like this and do not mean to imply something from it. You're shooting yourself in the foot. To take this, which is maybe even a design for Azeroth, but the globe of Azeroth regardless, and put it even partially over this in the background is suggesting that they're the same thing. Now, that could be the Emerald Dream over there, 
could be the perfected version of Azeroth, could be the dream itself separated, and, and that could be why we see it depicted with the rings around it in in the Legion map. Could be why. But I really think that the reason they overlay with Azeroth, and I would think that that is a, uh, an intentional cinematic hint, that that celestial body far off in the distance is Azeroth. Because we're standing on a celestial body that is orbiting Azeroth. Now, if we can look out into the sky and see Elun in the blue child, then I suppose we must be standing upon our sun. Yep. That's, that sounds kind of weird, though, doesn't it? That would mean that I'm claiming that Elunaria, where the life binder, Titan manifestation of life, exists on the sun, a giant source of light. And when you think about the blue child corresponding to the Winter Queen and Musha, Elune corresponding to Elune as those are sisters of life, ANR being on the sun makes perfect sense. Like in my mind, that's where she should That's where she should be. Unless she's meant to be on Earth and Azeroth is meant to be on the sun, which is I think very possible. There's a high possibility that ANR has switched places with Azeroth, and that Azeroth, as a br brilliant beacon of, in the cosmos, is meant to be the sun, and instead is the is inside the planet, and ANR is on the sun, and Azeroth is not. But just a thought when looking at this place. Plus, uh, for those who don't recognize that this place is covered in Draenor um, plants, so that could actually be Draenor as well. I know that's going to fuck with some minds, because these moons do not correspond with Drenor. Fuck, we could be on Drenor, for all I know. Like, I, I don't exactly know. I, I, re I, I wish that I knew for sure what the answer was. I can only go with what I have. And here's the thing. Looking at how much light is present here, it would seem to me like... <laughs> it doesn't seem to be a stretch. And you guys have gone into the Emerald Dream, remember? Remember how in the Emerald Dream... It almost looks like the light is coming from, like, the ground. Like, remember how it looked like, uh... It doesn't look like there's a su there's no sun in the sky, in the dream. You guys, know, you guys realize that. There's no sun. There's, n there's nothing like that. And the dream itself seems to be generating light. So... Here's what I think. I think that, as depicted in the map, the Shadowlands and the Dream are not visible in reality, but they're linked to reality. That is to say that I think the sun, and also the moons, are places, people, <laughs> and to a degree, concepts. They're not just one thing, they're multiple things together. So that is to say that I think that the sun connects to the Emerald Dream, which connects to the actual full realms of life, the dream. And I think that the blue child connects to Ardenweald, which connects to the full realms of shadow, the Shadowlands. But we, what we see in terms of the Shadowlands and the Emerald Dream are very limited. One could say lifelands. Yeah, if you're a fucking dweeb who likes to make up terms, yeah, one could say lifelands. God damn it. Um... Or you could call it what it's called, canonically, and call it the dream. I'm joking, I know you are. Which is why I responded the way I did. Because I know you're saying it to trigger me, so I let you trigger me, why not? Oh, we have to use portals. Oh shit, we have to go inside the ship. Let's do it! Okay, I'm gonna go this way. Also, look at these focusing crystals, which literally are used to open a fell blast, by the way. Oh, we did it. Also, nothing about the life growing around here seems natural at all. Life should not be just randomly growing on metal, okay? There's no root system. There's nothing natural about what we see here. It's all, you see how it's just like all wild growth on, on machines? 
doesn't seem... The letters used to spell Draenor and Anar are quite similar. Yep, that's one thing I've been pointing out recently. Because, look, what was the planet Argus called? Argus. What was the Titan called? Argus. What's the planet Azeroth called? Azeroth. What's Azeroth called? Azeroth. So, does that same rule apply to Draenor? How come Draenor has all of the letters used to spell Anar in it? With a couple added. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Especially considering that Draenor was overrun by life because it had an overabundance of spirit energy. So, you know, just a thought, just maybe a thought, you know? But I'm also starting to wonder if maybe ANR has slept and awakened multiple times. If she remembers the awakening, part of me wonders, has there been more than one awakening? Is she like the Golveg who's been burned twice and twice reborn with different power? I mean, we have our, our sketchy arcane water that we have in other places. And by the way, look at these. What does that remind you of? I think we'd fucking be naive to not say the Emerald Dream. Maybe this is the place uh, through which the water that comes into the dream flows. Does anyone know where that water comes from? You guys know the water that comes out of the wellspring thing that's like imperative for the for the operation of the dream? Anyone know where that comes from? Water seems similar to Zareth's starting area as well. Yeah, I think that they actually are similar and, and I think that that's intentional. If Sargeras breaks the other titans as he did Agrimar, no power in the universe will, st will stop him. Yeah, you're right, which means that if we defeat Sargeras, what power in the universe is going to stop you? You guys see her dialogue here? The tormented cries of the Pantheon ring out from deep within the core of Argus. If Sargeras breaks them as he did Agrimar, no power in this universe will stop him. And it just makes me think like, okay, so inversely, if we defeat Sargeras, and you are victorious, who's gonna stop you? Imagine El Lunari is actually Zareth Vide, that'd be scary. Okay, so <laughs> I think that that actually is possible. <clears throat> the idea that the Titans have found and seized these some of the Zareth machines, I'm not opposed to at all. I actually think that that's very possible. And I think that that's probably why all of the Titans have a similar body, except Sargeras and Agrimar, who do not appear, well, Agrimar does after the fact who do not appear on the seat of the Pantheon in the same way that the other Titans do. And I think that that's because the Titans probably reforged themselves using the power of Zareth Ortis, um, if it isn't their naturally occurring form as we're led to believe, which I don't think it is. Considering the fact that Amunthul... Here's the deal, chat. How come if Amunthul's the first one to wake up and his planet was never ordered using the tactics which he allegedly seeks to employ on other worlds to order them, then why does he do it on other worlds, chat? Because what that says is Amunthul's world was not ordered. Amunthul can't have ordered his own world before he woke up. It doesn't work like that. So for him to wake up on a world that was not ordered by him and say, Oh, I need to order all the other worlds is kind of weird. I think that's a belief developed by Amunthul later on, not one that he actually was inherent to him personally. The Pantheon will be reborn in darkness. Hmm. Let's go to the exhaust. I'm still under the impression they're Gen 1 Eternals from the Realms of Order. They just were able to paint a large propaganda picture. So I can't get behind that because Gen 1 implies that the first ones made them. So I, I really just, I can't get behind that. They have to be Gen 2 in my opinion. They're not Gen 1. They have to be Gen 2. Either Gen 1 reforged in a new body, or they're Gen 2, like, what I'm trying to say, dude, is they don't craft the fucking entities. This isn't that complex, man. They don't craft the entities. They craft bodies. The entities go in the bodies, okay? So it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter as long as the, as long as the, uh, well, we're fucking dead. Yep. These, these, yep, these crushers, demolishers are all powered by shadow, flame, or fell. Once again, it's very strange. And Taurus, I think, was meant to give us a lot of hints about fell and about the Burning Legion. It, dude, then what the fuck is shadow flame? Dude, that's why I've been, that's why I've been so bent out of shape since, since fucking about Deathwing. Yo, come back here, come back here, come back here. I forgot, we have to show people this. Okay, chat, here's what you need to see. The core of this room over here, you see this red liquid flowing through the facility. By the way, okay, let me just start this over. Let me just start this over. For those who don't know, this is a Titan facility, okay? 
Illyria Windrunner recognizes the architecture when she first comes to Argus in 1000 Years of War. Let me make this very clear. This facility was not built by Sargeras. It's not built by Sargeras. I think it's repurposed by Sargeras. This is, already, this is already here. This isn't Legion architecture. Why was this here? And why was Illyria seeing Titan architecture on Argus? <laughs> There's a reason. So look in here. You see this energy pouring out? What does this look like to you? Honey? Kind of. But in terms of in-game, it's blood. It's blood. Is what it is. And it's the same, I think, um, it's, this is the result, I think, of mixing two different powers. And I think that it's creating, it might be creating fell. So this is one power, this red blood, which could be the blood of Sargeras, could be the blood of Argus, could be both. We come into the Temple of Anguish here, which has always been here, for the record. Probably always existed to some degree as a torture chamber. Down here... These souls are nearly ready to join Agrimar in the Master's service. Ignore Varimathris. He's fucking annoying, but just ignore him. Hmm. Draw your blades! I will show you torment! Such a good boss. Your torment is only beginning. Greaves of Mercurial Allegiance. Ryan Lash. Whip. And look, this reminds me a lot of Uldir. What is this? Why are there wells of this power here? And uh, if you look at the constellations, there are some... I think people have compared these to Argus or Azeroth or something? There's some kind of correlation. I can't remember what it is. There's this one roach, Resilient Roach which is living through the radiation that basically is here. This place resembles Uldir. Uh, more like an experiment facility. Indeed. Then we have this room, in which the Pantheon is being tormented. Slow down, slow, slow. Slow, slow, don't kill fast. I want to see the Torment of Kazgaroth manifest. I want to show you guys something. So, in this room is Kazgaroth, Norganon, Golganeth, and Amon Thul. Okay? The Torment of Kazgaroth is one of the spells that manifests. And when the, when the torments of these um, titans appear, they appear as the titans themselves. But there's something interesting about Agrimar. Or not Agrimar, about... Um, Kazgaroth, and that is that Kazgaroth actually already appears to be corrupted. So these souls, plural, are almost all ready to join in the Master's service, but not quite. They were waiting till they finished the job. Unfortunately, their job was left half finished. And like Agrimar, when we set them free, we are breaking the kind of spell, so to speak, that Sargeras had kind of put on them. Now, whether that's a good thing or not, I don't, I don't know. Kind of seems like I'm not really sure, like, how is Flaming Agrimar that much different than not Flaming Agrimar? Because not Flaming Agrimar follows Amonthul. Flaming Agrimar follows Sargeras. Like, like, who's, you know, how's one better than the other? Also, um, do some damage. Here we go. Here comes Flames of Kazgaroth. Look at him. Kazgaroth looks a little interesting. Huh. 
Now, this is Dark Keeper Adis, who's one of the NPCs here, but there is a Kazgaroth uh, model in the game, uncorrupted. So the fact that they chose to use this is interesting. It almost suggests that because of his, the way that he is, Kazgaroth being fire, maybe he had a predisposition for being affected by these, by what was going on. Maybe he's already turned. The Gloom Sister uses ice and shadow magic. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Torment of Norganon, here it comes. Spectral Army of Norganon. Spectral Army. Careful! Mortals ain't meant to walk the Dreamweaver's path. And if you walk into it, normally it's supposed to one-shot you and kill you instantly. So, I think that says a lot about Norganon. One HP. Can't do any damage to it. If you step into it, you fucking die. Instant. That's how, it was, that's how it worked originally when this was current. And see, I'd be fucking dead. I'd be dead, because I didn't find my way through. So now I'm dead, theoretically. So thanks, thanks, Norganon. Oh, just kidding, they turn around and go the other way. Everything's fine. Norganon is for sure space. is definitely time, right? But whether or not, let me ask you this. Albert Einstein came up with, I don't know if he came up with it, but he, here's Golganeth. Torments of Golgoneth. Albert Einstein talked about the concept of space-time and them both being inherently linked together. So, it just makes me wonder, are, Namanth are Amanthul and Norganon supposed to be one being? Why are they split? Why are space and time two separate things? Maybe just for the sake of... I mean, I guess I don't really know. Yo, split one of these up. Can you taunt one of them? Fury of Golgoneth is these like lightning-esque, this lightning ability on me. Flash freeze. Sense of dread. Eek. The Coven has unleashed the mocking nations of Amonthul, and look at him. What is it? What does it do? I don't even remember. Touch of the Cosmos, by the way. By the way, Mother of the Cosmos is, is fell colored, by the way. I wield the power of the Cosmos. Touch of Chaos. Hitting you with fell. Touch of the Cosmos. Machinations of Amonthul. What is he doing? Machinations of Amonthul. His torment manipulates and collapses time around itself and the raid, restoring the caster to full health and inflicting arcane damage to all players, which stacks. Manipulates and collapses time around itself. Uh. Arcane damage being dealt. Bro looking a bit evil. Oh, he's fucking real evil. He's big evil. I'm pretty sh sure the Disorder Domain had a lot of the vital roles they play in the universe stolen from them by order. Why is your head on fire? Oh, that's just because I'm wearing an Argus helmet. Oh, just kidding. Sorry, it's from the Shadowlands. They're not related. <laughs> The Cyclopean nature of this stuff, hmm, yeah. The flaming head. It's pretty interesting. What's the animation above Amonthul when he finishes casting? It's like a time animation. It was like a crown. Did you see that? It looked like a little crown of light fading into a time thing. Bro, I'm telling you. The light and void thing, I'm t it's this guy. It's this motherfucker. It's gotta be, dude. The correlation between time and light and void cannot be a coincidence. It's gotta be this fucking guy. Fury of Golgoneth. Collapses time around us. Remember the Titans. Defeat the Coven while at least one of each torment survives. 
The souls of the Pantheon are free, but they had endured so much suffering. Let me bide with him for a time, offer a bit of comfort. Remain here, Magni. The rest of us will go on. So close now to the end. Can we go to the last area? Hmm. Can we go here? This may be the one place in the universe sacred to the Legion. Demons would pluck out their eyes sooner than gaze upon it. Who could ever imagine such a sacrifice? <laughs> Definitely not you, Illidan. Darkkeeper Adis. So this is the... Uh, so we actually don't see this model until after we fight Kazgaroth. So this is the model that they were using for Kazgaroth, but you don't see it until after the fight. So I think that's fucking super interesting. Also, check this out. Kill this guy. The energy here, chat. Now you'll see it even more. Just on both sides of Antorus, it's flowing out. Antorus seems to be manufacturing an energy. Do you see what I'm trying to say? How it's transitioning from red to kind of a yellow to kind of this green. It's 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 almost like the red energy, which maybe is Sargeras, is like being. It's almost as if it comes close as it comes closer to Argus. It's changing. And it's falling down, similar to the water motif that we saw in the other areas, but look what falls out of the platform that Ar he's on. Fell. Fell. It's like Antorus is a factory to make fell. And it, and it cascades down into Argus. The whole planet is covered in it because they've been making it. Fell is not a naturally occurring magic. There's a reason why only demons have it. There's a reason why it's a power specific to the Legion. I think that reason is because they're making it. Now here's the thing. The stories and short stories and lore that led up to this raid would lead you to believe that Argus is in a prison. Let me ask you guys something. Does this look like a prison? Compared to anything that you've seen, is this a prison? Sure doesn't look like it to me. For a prison, it's got a nice big open sky. No chains, no bars, nothing. Hubis tank. If the body part theory is correct, he is currently brainless, but not unaware. I don't think brainless is as far as I would go with it, man. Like, I think that they've done something to really fuck him up, but I don't know about complete. You know. Who left that stank? What's the body part theory? The body part theory is that. Uh, that, uh. <laughs> Body part theory is the theory that the old gods are all fragmented body parts of other gods. Like Yogg-Saron being the brain of Argus. Because when you fight Argus, um, he has no brain. His head is literally crushed open, like smashed open, and there's no brain. He has no mouth. He has very scary eyes, basically no nose. So the, the question would become then, like, what, what thing becomes each part? Well... The Zoth acts quite like a heart and acts a lot like the heart of Azeroth. Yashraj literally had a heart, but breathes out negative emotion. Uh, Cthune was a big eyeball with a stomach inside of it. And uh, yogg -Saron was a big mouth with a brain. So, let's fight this boss. Agrimar's on fire. He's got a flaming broken in half sword, which I think is key to his ability to resist the influence of order. This raid is fucking sick. So we take Argus's world soul to the seat of the Pantheon to sever his connection to Argus. Aenar arrives first, then Agrimar, then Amonthul, then Kazgaroth, then Norganon, then Golgoneth. Ka 
Norganon is the one that channels first, which is interesting. ANR's first to the seat, Norganon's first to channel. It's interesting how he comes out brimming with light, and he's all red. What I think is interesting about this red and golden form is it's not one that we see ever again. Even when Amonthul blasts Argus to make him like Apocalypse, black and red, which I think is rewinding time, we're gonna show you guys that. Even when he does that, he's not red and gold, he's black and red. What could Sargeras possibly mean by them stealing Argus? Guys, it's not that complicated. There has been a conflict occurring between these gods for a long time, and they refer to the prize multiple times. Sargeras talks about claiming his prize. ANR talks about stopping Sargeras claiming his prize. If Argus kills you, he'll say, Master, I go to claim your prize. Prize, 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 prize. What do you get prizes for, chat? Winning things. Typically, competitions, right? Let's say that he challenged the Pantheon to Makara for the power of Argus. I will fucking fight all of you. I'll fight all six of you. And if I win, I get him. If I win, I get it. If I win, I get the power. If I win, I get Azeroth. Whatever it is, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't really matter. It's more about that you don't call something a prize unless you want it. That's the way I see it. The Titans just want their two first ones super batteries, and they will do anything in their power to get them. Yes. Yes. And as I just tried to show you with Argus, it's a, it's a super battery. Look at this guy's fucking abilities, chat. Death. Death and pain. Lamau? Yeah, true. Death, death, and pain. And in this orderly form, I don't know if this is, you know... The might of sea and sky must aid our champions, Golgoneth. This guy has rage. Gets the rage of Sargeras. Golgoneth calls upon the power of sea and sky to cleanse the corruption. Which, there isn't any corruption really up to this point, but... It almost kind of came off to me like he was talking about us. Cone of death. Like, what? Like, look at this. Death fog. Death. Like, this is what I try to point out. Argus has nothing to do with death, Pyromancer. Dude, it pissed me off so much. Literally until Legion, or sorry, until Shadowlands, when they overtly came out and fucking said that the fucking, that the fucking uh, Natharzim were intentionally trying to fill Argus with death magic. Only then did people finally come to accept the power that he wielded, which blows my mind. People just don't want to believe it. They, they literally just can't see it unless it's written in fucking plain text in their face. He's a scythe, bro. Like, the Kronos references are off the fucking charts right now. Let the fury of the sea wash away this corruption. So here's the corruption. Golgoneth, the water, the fury of the sea can cleanse out this death fog. It's lightning. It's fucking literally lightning. It's literally lightning. Cleansing death. Hmm. Looks at Amonthul. Looks at Golgoneth. Hmm. What have you done? Edge of obliteration. Give it to me. Oh look, Agrimar giving me his power. Oh, but Agrimar doesn't wield the light, Pyromancer. Your old videos where you said they wield the lighter, that's not true, because you don't go with Chronicle. Okay, right. Yeah, and then Dragonflight just put it in your fucking face that the Titans use light, and now people see it. It's funny how that works. It's hilarious how that works. But here we are. Edge of obliteration again. If you look at Amonthul, you'll notice he doesn't have feet like the others. That's a that's an interesting point. He does have like mechanical boots. Maybe Amonthul is just a fucking MacGuffin construct that was created by probably that fuckface over there. But regardless, like soul blight, soul burst, soul cleave, like edge of obliteration. Like there's just no chance that this. Look, and here's the deal. The Titans have admitted that they've had reorigination as a power forever. Like, they don't talk about them finding reorigination. They talk about it as if it's a power that they've just kind of always had access to. Well, let me tell you something. This instance 
This guy literally casts Reorigination. Okay, so... No hope, just pain. Only pain. Time answers to me, Unmaker! The one force that can bind your relentless fury! Uh-oh. Way to go, dumbass! How'd that work? By the way, this is the canonical version of the fight. Mythic is. So he's just gonna reap our souls. He's flat out going to reap our souls. Like, we're just gonna die. It doesn't do damage. It just kills you. Death. You don't take maximum damage. You just die. After all we have endured, it must not end this way. Hope is not lost, High Father. You guys like that Maldraxxus energy she just put in front of you right there? We're just gonna ignore that, but really has nothing to do with anything. ANR's a sus ass bitch. And the only reason, the only reason why we make it through this fight is because she breaks natural order. Death literally just kills us and she's like, nah, I don't think so. I think that where hope exists, you make room for healing for all things that are possible and some that are not. Argus also was just trying to cast an ability called the end of all things, which is the another name for the word uh, Ragnarok, which is another term for the hour of twilight or twilight of the gods. Probably has something to do with the end of all things, but I digress. Hmm. Sargeras's gaze is cast upon the battle, so now Sargeras is watching us. He's looking at it and he's freaking out. He's mad, he's, he's afraid. But it's also manifesting from Argus, it would, it would seem. Initialization sequence of the Apocalypses module. So this is, a, in, the, in the normal fight, this is an, a reorigination module. In this, it turns into an Apocalypses module. Which means that in, in reverting time, as Amenthul did, seemingly, and changing Argus to this black and red, very nightmare, very Revendreth anima, very sort of Sargeras looking form, it's almost like he's changing the very energy inside of the blade or what is to go in the blade. So in some fantastic way, Amenthul could have actually unintentionally aided Sargeras in what Sargeras was attempting to do. But we end up with this, which is definitely the power inside of the sword. No question. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, look at that. And it all does shadow damage. Apocalypse zone, shadow damage inflicted. Pretty fascinating, I think. And it expands and it expands and it expands. This fight is so sick. Yeah. Any explanation why the Titans are cool with Illidan Stang? Wouldn't he be a nuisance? Um. Do you guys forget about the destiny that Zero told Illidan about? Illidan is wanted by all domains. They're fine with him being there. Well, I'm pretty sure the Titans are the one that forged the destiny that they sent out to Illidan. Think about this. <clears throat> Illidan's destiny was to end the Age of Demons, which Sargeras was literally responsible for. That can't be a coincidence, right? The cycle of life and death in the cosmos has been artificially halted. And in doing so, I believe that does cause Azeroth, well, maybe partly causes her to stay in a slumber, but it also is likely draining her of her power. I don't think that the Titans, or even Aenar, can create a soul. Soul. Something beyond the grasp of all of these gods besides Azeroth. Azeroth and Argus, and to a, to a degree, even Sargeras, they show an aptitude for the soul. The fell is something that directly ignites the soul. Soul magic and the root of where souls come from is the key here. And I think that the answer to that is Azeroth. And I worry that if you drain her of all the souls and she doesn't have anything coming back to her, that something really bad would happen. Maybe you'd fall asleep and not having enough energy to, to wake up. 
and we all know that a dream that you're stuck in is no dream at all. 